Washington, D.C. Here in our nation's capital, the hallowed halls of America's history echo with the names and deeds of our country's leaders. Lincoln, Washington, Jefferson. But equally in the struggle for liberty and the pursuit of happiness have been our nation's women. Leaders in every decade, Betsy Ross, Martha Washington, Josephine McBain, Washington's most celebrated hostess, Senator Tom Reynolds' daughter, Jo. There have been the Clara Bartons who made the bandages and the Josephine McBains who bought the Red Cross station wagons. Oh, isn't that sweet. Uh, which one is it? The third girl. Oh. Darling, you are wonderful. Goodbye now. Thank you. The Argentine polo team, oh. Admiral Bowden, and uh, Mickey Rooney. That jockey you liked at Pimlico? Oh, dear, it's been that kind of a day. Thank and the Maharani, me. don't forget, she pronounces the country Stravangoli. Stravangoli. Yes, and her companion's name is Lali Rijunpour. And Mrs. Boudreau is no longer Mrs. Boudreau, she's Mrs. Kensington now. Kensington. Really, quite a remarkable list. Only two refusals out of 64. Your father wanted to invite Senators Heller and Clark, but I said no. They're investigating each other. Mr. and Mrs. Van Johnson Bowen to say they'll be here. Oh, thank you, Arthur. And Ruth Pearson's column was on inflation. And Mrs. Preston Pratt the third called. Ruth Pearson what? Who? Mrs. Preston Pratt the third. That's her Squasnack Island woman. Oh. Knew you met your ex-husband up there. Perfectly invited herself. Well, keep her away from me. I prefer not to relive mm -hmm. my honeymoon. Oh. Well. Yeah. Hello, Catherine. Hello, How are you doing? Good evening, Admiral. Oh, hello, Kennedy. Oh, what a lovely color. How are you tonight? Wonderful to see you. Oh, Drew, Drew, darling, I loved every key in your typewriter today. You handle inflation, I can't. Easy, hello, darling. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I burn you? No, but you'd like to, wouldn't you, darling? Oh, you look positively ravishing. Thank Where's you. that fabulous van? He's just finishing a scene at the Smithsonian Museum. But he'll be here, won't he? Oh, yes, he said he would, provided they don't stuff him and mount him. Oh, Evie, you're a riot. That's <laughs> a <this> party. Oh. <laughs> uh, we never miss one of those parties. Not because we like them. We're, We're afraid, afraid to. Oh, how do you do, Miss Rajan Uh, Do you find our country very different from your own Stravangan Bolia? Yeah? Yes. Oh, uh, how interesting. <laughs> oh. Elsa, darling. So the senator held the floor three hours, eh? What was he speaking about? <laughs> he didn't say. <laughs> oh, a lovely party, Mrs. McBain. <laughs> uh, I want you to meet Senator Holbrook. Oh, how do you do? I'll be looking forward so to this. To Good, evening. Good, Good evening. Good evening. How, how are, are you? Do? And uh, I'm Senator Reynolds, your father. Oh, now don't let that get around. <laughs> Not too much water, Henry. Yes, sir, Mr. McBain. Mr. Andrew, we're so glad to see you home well, again. It's good to be here, Artie. We're so glad to have you back. I'm glad to be back, Jan. Hi, you, Freddie. Hi, Mr. McBain. Glad to be back. Good enough. We had a terrible time trying to get Angus to eat. Really? Oh, he's so blue, he won't even chase the mailman anymore. <laughs> I guess it's uh, the same cast, huh? Same old cast. A little bit more brass, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe last week, Army this week. Shall I tell Mrs. McBain you here, sir? No, no, don't disturb her. I just slipped in this way to pick up a few things I forgot. Mrs. McBain, <laughs> the Argentine polo team is ready. Oh, oh, excuse me. That's what I like. Men in numbers. <laughs> Oh, Senator, I was just going to ask... Oh, 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 thank you. Sonriense, <laughs> senores. <laughs> now, hold it, please. Good evening, General Prager. Good evening, Henry. Good evening, Good evening Henry. Henry. 
Phyllis. When did you join? Well, look at that little Phyllis. Yeah, Lieutenant to all you civilians. Oh, well, hello, Ned. Glad to see you, Joe. Oh, Sky, darling, late for your own party. I thought only women liked to make entrances. Phyllis, sweetie, what on earth have you joined? The United States Army Angel. You've no doubt heard about it. Oh, terribly sorry, darling, but we just learned now that we're dashing off to Paris. Paris? Yes, isn't that a lovely coincidence? We're all in shape. I don't doubt it. Joe, darling, if you have any more sweet things to say, you'd better say them fast. We're catching our plane in an hour. But we're due at the British Embassy for dinner. Oh, I'm sorry to have to steal your guest of honor away, Joe, but Europe needs straightening out. Oh, lots of things need straightening out. <laughs> oh, thank you. You'll excuse us. Matter, old boy. Well, well, what's the matter, old boy? Didn't they invite you either? Well, don't you worry. You're not missing anything. No, sir. No, sir. You helped me hunt for my books, huh? Darling, General Prager asked for Phyllis in the setup, not me. It's just a coincidence. And such a cozy one. Well, I hope the three of you will be very happy in your Paris garret. your ball. <laughs> now, where did you drop from? Tom, how's your cribbage? Fine, Andy. Come on. We need a new member of the zoo. Come on, say hello to Joe. No, no, thank you. Hello, Joe. Hello, Andrew. Well, I guess it's up to me. I thought you were in the army, Andy. I am. Hello, Phyllis. Uh, Joe, I'm missing a couple of books I need in my work. I'm Making some tests, you know, testing. Uh, but don't let me disturb. Uh, what books, Andrew? Well, The Rubber Coating of Fabrics by Schweck and Wool in the Arctic Under Stress and Strain. What's he doing here? Stressing and straining. Well, those books are around here somewhere, Andy. I just saw them recently. Well, thanks, Tom. Uh, you folks will excuse me, I, I know. Oh, well. Uh, look at this. He's looking so much better and still very attractive. I guess we'd better think about going, Sky. I'll find our general. Yes, yes, you don't want to miss Paris in the spring, the Eiffel Tower, and Phyllis in bloom. Darling, I lock my door every night. Oh, which side will she be on? This assignment is straight from heaven for you and me. Oh? Planes leave every half hour for Paris and our little Garrett. Can't you see us now walking along the Seine hand in hand? I can. The father can't. Oh, well, I think... Now, Skye, do, do you really want me to come? Because if you're still in the playing the field mood, I'm not playing. If there's anything that I like, it's a good question. There's your answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. They weren't in the library, and I thought they might be under there. Excuse me. Uh, oh. I wondered where this was. Hold that, will you? Hold it back. Be good, Angus. Now, if I can just find the other lenses. You're talking about those little glass things. They're upstairs in the linen closet in an old cold cream jar. Well, the books must be somewhere. Couldn't you go out and buy two new copies? The rubber coating of fabrics, yes. But wool in the Arctic under stress and strain, I wrote myself. Then write another. Darling, this is terrible. I haven't Hello, seen you Martha. since you were a bride. I can see you now in that pink dress under my big elm. And there's the groom. Oh, Andrew, I must kiss you. Oh, Martha, you're a vision. <laughs> oh, what a pretty time. Oh, thank you. What are you doing in our nation's capital? Seeing my senator. Now, you remember that dirt road through the woods to the beach? Uh, you should. You were always on it. Well, some off islanders have ferried over a truckload of tar and gravel. I said, Senator, we'll have no eyesore modern roads on Susquehanna. Well, bully for our side. How'd you get off the island? Row all the way? Speaking of rowing, what really happened the night that you said you rode around the island? Oh, uh, Martha, this is Colonel Fairchild. Uh, this is Mrs. Preston Pratt. Uh, the Colonel's going to NATO. How, How do you do? You do? Uh, keep your eye on those foreigners. Well, what happened? Well, Martha, you see, I had to row all night because it was a very strong undercurrent. Then what was she doing with those pine needles in her hair? Uh, uh, <laughs> did I tell you the Colonel was going to NATO? Uh, yes. Oh, and uh, you two still go on those picnics together? Oh, by the way, what did you do with my skillet? Oh, I put that in the whole closet with the blankets and the thermoses. But about oh, the pine needles, Martha, Martha. Andrew and I are divorced. Oh, 
Uh, well, uh, where's your nearest phone? Well, because before I go, I must telephone the Department of Agriculture. Japanese beetles are ruining our lovely elms, you know. Oh, oh you should share our dahlias in the fall, but you'll be a native, won't you? The first dinner. door to the right, you'll find it there. Martha's a lot of fun when you get to know her. I should be embarrassed, but I'm only annoyed. Don't be, my dear. That's the old life. Paris is the new. When do we start living it? Come along, Colonel. Fort Sumter has just been fired upon. <laughs> Think of me, darling, when I'm in the thick of things. <laughs> Say, Laguerre, like Joe. Don't get lonesome. We'll be commuting. Good night, Senator. Now, you cable me, Shape Headquarters, Paris, when you make your reservations. These open arms will be waiting for you at Arley Field. <laughs> He'd be a man of a cute trick, turning up after two months unannounced. You could see I was giving a party, couldn't you? You could count the cars outside, couldn't you? I didn't have the time. Well, you should have come in the front door like everyone else and worn your uniform. I'm wearing it. Oh. Do you mean to say you didn't accept the colonelcy? I can do the same job in tweeds, and when I'm finished, to get back to the plant and my research. Now, if I upset anything, I'm sorry. Upset anything? You mean sneaking in the back door, skulking around, spying, reliving our courtship with Mrs. Preston Pratt? I couldn't relive it with you, could Keep I? Keep your voice down. Doesn't it strike you as being rather symbolic that the Japanese beetles are destroying our elm tree? Yes, since our marriage fell apart at the same time. Hamburger Island, how coy could we get? Oh, we got pretty coy. That's the same night that you suggested we wear matching suits. As I recall, you bought a set of him and her towels. Well, that was a mistake, and I made a lot of others, too, like thinking you'd be the same girl here as you were in that island. Oh, well, of course, you didn't turn out to be a big disappointment, loading the dinner table with those fascinating fabric engineers. What are you talking now, about? Now, Andrew, let's take a silk thread and cross it with a bit of nylon thread and see what we get. Well, I know what I got. Bored! All right, go do your research in Paris. Chase after your gingerbread colonel. Will you be He'll quiet? be delighted to ringmaster this circus you're running, but you better keep a net up. Someday you'll fall flat in your face. Now, how dare you talk to me like that? Oh, Peppy, Baroness, you're not leaving. What? No caviar? <gasps> Henry, another bucket for the Baroness. You take your loud mouth and your junk out of this house. I'll be charmed, but you keep the junk. What? I should have caught on when that was taken. Anybody call those lousy? Things hamburgers. Hypocrite. You said they were cute at the time. They were burned at the time. <laughs> Artemisa, sweep up that mess. I'll take a dozen of those just to remind me of how lucky I am. Sorry, Tom. So long. The earliest reservation day after tomorrow. Well, all right, that'll do. Yes, yes, Joe McBain. Your boss knows me. Senator Reynolds' daughter. I'll send my man for the ticket. Bye. What's this? I thought you might want to reframe it. I do. You were both in good voice tonight. Keep the net up. Another bucket for the Baroness. Oh. Father, how could I have ever been caught so off guard? Blinded by summer moonlight, toasting those sandy marshmallows, that big elm tree. Don't you ever let me go on another holiday without first checking... Not the... even to Paris? Father, this is different. Yes, I know. You want to protect your interests, but uh, do you have to chase after him? Well, I'd better. Before that vulture Phyllis gets her claws into him. Oh, what a sweet setup for her, his office wife. Can't you see her now looking so chicly patriotic as she bends close to pour his coffee? It figures. First Lieutenant Phyllis Trumbull. <laughs> Good grief. If she got a commission as a first lieutenant, I should be a general. Why not? Why not? Nowadays, many a man's head is turned by a pretty uniform. Are you inferring I should join the army? Why, it seems to me that would solve your myriad problems. You're kidding. I'm confident that my daughter, with her superior leadership qualities, could top anything Lieutenant Phyllis had to offer. And you could get me assigned to Europe. Yeah. And you could work the day shift as well as the night shift. It's perfect. 
Oh, now, Father, I'm not greedy. You know that. I don't mind starting as a major or a captain and working up on my own merits. Why, there's no telling. You might be that first woman general. Even president. Oh, I'll let you be president first. Oh, now, Father, you'll take care of all the red tape and getting the commission, that sort of thing? Roger. And I couldn't be prouder. Say, I'm not rushing into this thing, am I? You are. And you'd better. The age limit is 35. Now, you know perfectly well that I'm only... 35. <laughs> you call the beeper, Omar. They'll take care of everything while I close up the house. Hello. Hello, TWA? Oh, this is Senator Reynolds' daughter again. Uh, I'd like to cancel that reservation I made for Paris. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm still going, but I'm going another way. The Army's sending me. Thank you. Bye-bye. While 230 miles to the north was another woman furthering the female cause, making history of a different kind, prominent and a leader in her field. Hold it. Still? That's fine, honey child. Now one for Halloween. Oh, but this is April Fool's Day. Magazine publicity. You know, you make them months in advance. Uh-uh, Mr. Gettleman. And speaking of love, honey, your love to meet a friend I got coming over here. Now, I thought maybe if you're not tied down for dinner but tonight... But you know, I never eat before a performance. It shows. Not even with my chief packer? Why, we wouldn't be in business if it wasn't for Nicola Horace. Now, there's such a thing as courtesy, isn't there? Well, I guess so. I I'll think about it. That's my little love bug. Uh -huh. All right, strike a pose. Glad to see you. Come on, step right over here. Danger O'Dowd, I'd like to present my best friend, Mr. Nick Laharis. Danger? You don't scare me a bit. I'd like you to go to a little party with me tonight. How about it? How about the picture? Hey, you didn't answer my question. What about my party? You can be the whole party. Danger, baby. Where you going, love bug? Oh, I'm getting away from men and love and bugs. <laughs> Miss McBain! Oh, to me, sir, must you make all that racket? Mrs. McBain, you'll have to wake up. Oh? You'll have to wake up. You're joining the army at 11. Oh. Now, hurry. Oh, I am. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Joe McBain. Did General Bradley phone you? No. He hasn't called me all morning. But uh, Lieutenant Colmar in his office phoned and explained that you are single, you have all the qualifications, and you desire to join. Yes, yes, and the sooner the better. I've got a million things to do before I get off. Henry? Birth certificate. And uh, I'd like that back. Diplomas. College of Fine Arts. Lucerne Academy for Young Ladies. Miss Farcroft's Connecticut. Oh, uh, Henry, while I'm tied up here for a few minutes, will you go to Brentano's and pick me up these books? Almanac de Gotha. Right. Dining out in Paris. Mm -hmm. I fed royal stomachs by chef. And then uh, go along to General Bradley's office and have him give you an officer's guide and any little pamphlets that he may have on NATO and shape. A headquarters. Well, now, what do we do next? You fill out these papers in that room. Oh, you make them out for me, will you, dear? Very well. Uh, you don't mind signing them? Oh, no. No, not at all. <laughs> Please sit down, Mrs. McBain. Thank you. Now, we must have the names of five character references we can call. Oh, oh, certainly. Uh, Anna Rosenberg, Assistant Secretary of Defense. General Omar Bradley, Admiral Collins, and General Hoyt Vandenberg. That's four. Oh, oh and the President. Of the United States, that is. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I've got Miss Carnegie for you. Oh, good. Hello, hello, Harry, darling. Well, I'm flying overseas in a matter of hours, so you must rush those uniforms. And take a little fullness out of the skirts, will you, dear? 
No, no, never mind about the captain's bars. I've ordered those at Tiffany's. Bye now. Any insanity in your family? Well, hardly. My father's a senator. I, Kendra Helping McBain, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will serve them honorably and faithfully against all their enemies according to the regulations and the uniform code of military justice. <laughs> I'm thrilled, Father, but why do I order to take Fort Lee, Virginia, when I'm going to Paris? Oh, only a formality. You know the Army and its red tape. Well, I'm going to take everything with the reply direct from there. Oh, oh, Henry, I'll wire you when to pick up the car. And, Artemisa, be sure everything is covered when you close the house. And, and make sure also that my ski things are put in the trunks that are sent to Paris. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Miss Gorham, be certain that everyone here gets a check for a month. I will. I could bore. I just can't believe all this. Oh, now, now, now. Josephine. <laughs> Remember, you're a Reynolds. Ouch! Oh, shot. I've been inoculated for everything with Phyllis Trumbull. Now, Father, I'm not going to worry about you on your vacation. That's right. You just worry about all the fish I'm going to catch. They're not going to like it at all. Oh. Now, be a good soldier. Oh. <laughs> Bye now. Intersection, turn left, 19 blocks, white training center. Thank you. Uh, boy, I mean soldier, you're in my way. Oh, oh, it's all right. You can let me pass. I'm one of you now. Just a little. Oh, goodbye. Thank you. Hello, girls. Say, so haven't you a lovely place to train in? What can we do for you? Oh, I'm one of your brand new officers. Can you tell me where to go? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, To Box four. B Company. Thank you, darling. Your company will be filling in during the next 48 hours, and girls will be arriving here day and night. All right, select your bed. No private. All luggage is stored in the luggage area directly behind your bed. Oh. You won't be officially welcomed until tomorrow at 0800. Eight o'clock to you. Oh, thank you. In the meantime, you'll see your first guide-on competition. All right, line up in single file. Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, Lieutenant, 
Oh, excuse me, Sergeant. I seem to be lost. Perhaps you could help me? Well, perhaps I can. Your name and where are you from? Joe McBain. Uh, Washington. Uh, you see, oh, I've just yes. come down here. Josephine McBain. Okay, McBain. Follow me. Oh, uh, uh, dear. Uh, where's your luggage, McBain? Well, it's in the car, but where do I go? Well, right now you're going with us to see the parade. Oh, will I see someone in charge? Will the general be there? Oh, yes. He'll be there, McBain. Oh, good. Say, I know you. You're Joe McBain, that famous uh, Washington madam. Oh, I read Time. Subscription? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> yes, I read that big article on you. Say, are you here uh, incognito? Well, let's say temporarily. Well, your secret's buried right here. Well, then I know it's safe. Uh, well, I'm Claire Schneiderman. Uh, how I'm Sergeant the... Wayne. Follow me. Oh, sure. Stop talking. Turn around and face me. At ease. At ease. General Prentice, isn't it? I'm Joe McBain. Remember the Pentagon parking lot? I met you there with my father, Senator Reynolds and General Bradley. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> oh, Martin, I was coming down here today. He wanted me to give you his best regard. Thank you. And uh, this is Colonel Hubbard. She's the commanding officer of the WAX. Oh, well, how do you do? Uh, how are you, Mrs. McBain? Oh, well, this is a nice surprise. I did want to meet you eventually. It looks as though you're doing a wonderful job here. Thank you. If you'll stay over, perhaps you'll have lunch with me tomorrow. I'd enjoy showing you around the training well, center. Well, I'd be delighted when I return. You will give me now a rain check, won't you? Oh, thank you. I'm all mixed up in this big place. Where is your airport? Uh, well, you go out the main gate. Uh, that's Route 36, you know. Then you turn left. Now, you go down about a mile until you come to a little orange stand under some trees. Yes. Uh, then just beyond that is a fork. Uh, well, you don't take the fork. Uh, you keep... Uh, uh, excuse me, Colonel Hubbard. McBain has left your unit. Who? Her man. I think we'd better join the others. Oh, a protocol. <laughs> Must you make all that racket? Come on, McBain, wake up. Hmm? Oh, but, Sergeant, I don't have to get up. Oh, I'm afraid you do. You see, we've arranged a welcome for you. Oh, but how sweet. I do hope your lovely Colonel hasn't gone to too much trouble. Well, you see, it isn't every day that we get someone like you. Oh, <laughs> oh does it matter what I wear? No, as long as you don't wear that. <laughs> you are cute. Now, let's see. Which way was that? Missing dining with the enlisted girls. Spending the night with a green group. It's been an invaluable experience. I must write father. Yes. Uh, well, since I'm going to be a command of God, so I'm glad I've learned the inner workings of the army. I'm going to Paris. Uh, and NATO, you know. No, I didn't know. Oh, yes, yes. I may ask for you, darling. You've been awfully sweet. Oh, uh, I'm Joe McVeigh. Uh, how are you, uh... Captain Malloy, uh, I suppose you've arranged everything for me, and whatever the army says goes for me. Then sit down, McBain. 
Welcome to Port Lee. Oh, thank you, Captain. I know how you must be feeling at this moment, because I once sat where you're sitting and wondered just what I'd gotten myself into. But no matter what your reasons for joining, patriotic, a desire to improve yourself, you'll find we're happy to have you. And the Army is anxious to find just the right job for you. Some of you may qualify for leader school, others, officer candidate school. We're here to help you, not only in your new Army career, but in personal fulfillment. Good luck, soldiers. Attention. Final out thank you. Oh, that was a sweet speech, Captain. I'd love a copy of that for my girls in NATO. Did you write it yourself? You'll have yes, to excuse me, Captain. As you can see, McBain is a very busy woman. Yes, yes. Well, uh, so long now. Wait a uh, minute. You forgot your little abner. But I have my shoes. They're in my car. Come on, you sad sack. Uh, Sergeant, uh, here's your sack. Take these things. I don't need them. Uh, here. But I went to my doctor and he gave me these same shots, I'm sure. Now we are both sure. Now, girls, will you please sit down while you wait for your interview? Do you excel in any sports? Well, I won lots of ribbons at the Pendleton Rodeo. I got sick and tired of pounding a typewriter all day long in a stuffy office. My grandfather made his money in the gold rush, cooking for tourists. That's why I was able to go to art school in San Francisco. I wanted to prove I could do something other than milk cows. So you were a G.I. bride and a lance corporal in the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service in the last war? Now, Clara, what job in the Army do you think you're best fitted for? Intelligence. And why your choice? Well, for some reason, gentlemen seem to take an interest in me. In fact, my boss in my last job, he was always... What job was that, Clara? Oh, well, I was a showgirl. And between shows, why, well, I'd go to the newsreel and see the different newsreels, and I saw one, this new Texas Army maneuver. Operation Longhorn. Yes, where the Army actually used a girl spy. I thought to myself, I'm always thinking to myself, I thought, well, why not get away from all these men, see, and get with just one man? Who's that? Uncle Sam. Well, it's just that I feel I'd like to give my country what I've got. Well, counterintelligence. A G2. Yes. Well, it does require certain special talents. Do you speak any languages fluently? Yes, ma'am. English. I see. Well, my boss, Mr. Gettleman, he didn't think Clara Schneiderman was glamorous enough, so he gave me a new name. What was it? Danger, old Dowd. <laughs> so silly. You won't tell any of the other girls? Everything is confidential. That's good. Specifically, what did you do as a showgirl? Wear pretty costumes? Uh, yes, uh, green gauze and a little fruit here and there. Oh, cherries and bananas and apples. And then we walk around and the creeps and uh, gentlemen would stare right through the cherries and the bananas. And you know, it's very upsetting to a girl like I. I just got so upset, I felt like joining the French Foreign Legion. But they wouldn't take you, so you drank the whack instead. Okay. Now, Clara, what other experience have you had? Well, when I was very little, I worked in my father's garage, the uh, Schneiderman Jiffy Toe. We serve you night and day. Garage experience, that's wonderful. We could use you in the motor pool. Well, you might, ma'am, but my heart wouldn't be in it like it would be in spying. It wouldn't? Mm. Anything else you've done? Well, now, let's see. Uh, something. Uh, oh, I used to sit on coffee bags. You what? Well, uh, you know, with my bathing suit on and have my picture taken. I was Miss Coffee Bean in 1949 and 50. Uh, then Miss Avocado in 1951. Of course, I was sitting amongst avocados. Of course. Now, let me see if I've got this all down. Help father in towing cars. Showgirl in nightclub. Mm -hmm. Sat on coffee bags and among avocados for uh, advertising purposes. Preference, intelligence work. Correct? Yes, yeah, correct. Thank you. Well, goodbye, dear.
Look, for the fourth time, what do you want to do in the army? For the fourth time, I want to see someone in charge. Is this woman's name McBain? Yes, ma'am. Just a moment, Sergeant Taylor, while I check with Captain Murchison. Get Captain Murchison at B Company. Yes, ma'am. What's that? Josephine McBain. Yes, yeah, she's in the new bath. Oh, no, no one told me about any VIP. I phone Major Cartwright. No, Captain, there's no record here. Oh, she is, eh? I'd better call the Pentagon and check with Colonel Fulbright. No, no record of a commission issued to Josephine McBain. She's listed as private. Well, I'll call General Bradley's office to see if he knows anything about it. Oh, I see, Colonel. I may have been in error. I'll ask the General, and then I'll phone you back. General Bradley, sir. Lieutenant Comar speaking. Yes, Lieutenant. Did I misunderstand you, sir, about Senator McBain's daughter? Did he phone you about her joining the WAC? Senator did say something about it. Better locate him. Uh, he's fishing at uh, Medicine Hat, Canada. Oh, no. No, thanks, General. No officer's training school. My daughter wants to start at the bottom. She's that kind of a girl. Save you. Bye. No commission for McBain. Check. No commission. Josephine McBain is Private McBain. Official. Thank you, Major. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. We checked officially, Private McBain, and you have no commission, none having been applied for. Get on with that interview, Sergeant Taylor. Now, what would you like to do? I'd like to murder my father. Raise your arms, Corporal. This jacket appears okay. Hey, how about the seams there? They look fine. Damn all areas of perspiration. Hey, and a minimum weight loss. That's twice around the obstacle course. Yeah. You weren't taking it easy, were you, Corporal? Oh, no, sir. He gave it the works. Looks like that Bain did know what he was talking about, sir. He's been bragging about the synthetic thread he's cooked up. You've accomplished miracles in the four months you've been here. Well, I have to admit, I started thinking four years ago. Now I'm going back to the factory and think some more. <laughs> You haven't told him yet? No, sir. So, uh, Andrew, we're in a bit of a spot. General Grail of the Alaskan Command has requested 500 more wax on the double. That means Arctic clothing, the best stuff we can rush off. We? Oui. You mean if I leave now, I'm undermining our national defense? Exactly. When are you going to talk this guy back into uniform so I can order him around? Sergeant. Yes. We'll need six girls by Saturday, assorted types, ages, and shapes. Will you volunteer for the hazardous mission of finding them? Oh, yes, sir. Anything for the quartermaster testing board, sir. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, three, two, halt! At ease. Fall out. McBain. You said fall out, didn't you? For the last three weeks, I've explained that you can't fall out from an at ease position. Oh, oh, a little trick. How cute. A word of advice, McBain. If you want to learn how to be a general, you first have to learn how to be a private. If you can't figure things out, then watch Schneiderman. Schneiderman, take McBain over there and drill her for another hour. Yes, Sergeant. The two. Attention. Private McBain and Private Schneiderman. Fall up. McBain, this is nothing personal, but you don't put any spirit into it. Now, let me show you how to pivot. Sure, go ahead. Show me. Okay? You put your right toe behind your left heel, thusly. And your shoulders, likewise. Do you know, Schneiderman, you've got something I'll never. Look, if you don't learn how to march, our company's never going to win that green guide on. 
Is that like the Irish sweepstakes? No, it's like West Point. Oh. You see, you can only win the green guide on for superior marching, and we're going to win it, that's all. Well, that's telling me. On your feet. Attention. Hey, you got to follow me, see? Left feet. Forward march. Uh, don't get too close. Come on, left. March. Don't push. Call him right. March. Stop breathing down my neck. Call him right. March. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Call him left. March. Keep it step. You're doing fine, Joe. Didn't General Bradley or, or the Secretary of Defense or the Vice President or your father, the Senator, answer any of your letters? Are you sure you mailed them after you read them? Oh, yes. Well, here's something you haven't read. Oh, you mean the cable from your colonel friend in Paris who's aide to General Prager? None other. Oh, I read that. My Cherie, uh, you join for me, now stick it out for me until I get back, which could be any weekend. Or oh, any year now. All consuming love and being a good boy, uh, getting to bed early. Probably early in the morning. Okay, Mother Harry, more meat. Well, you better start fixing those patties. Say, Schneiderman, come here. Check on with those 806 hamburgers. Yes, ma'am. What are those little things? Well, I didn't know if you wanted them cocktail size. Who are you kidding? Shove those things together. Some people prefer them small. Other people like them large. Schneiderman, you better ease into the spying business gradually. Mustn't overdo, you know. Come on, Big Bang, get the lead out. She should talk about the lead. You know, there was a big, tall man. He was looking at me right through the window. And he had a beard, didn't he? Yeah. No, oh, a jeep. He's too young to have a beard. You know, this is a real treat. We haven't had hamburger in a long time. Mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> oh, goodness. What's that? Secretary of the Army, Pentagon. Frank, darling, about my commission, this something mix-up, look at it. Red tape is keeping me, something, prisoner here. Am fed up. Quartermaster Board Research. Keeping Tom Branch? Well, the captain must know what she's doing. Nevertheless, I'm going to pull down my shade tonight. Oh, gee, that's a cute suit. It's so different with Bane. I 
have a terrible shock for you, Miss Bain. This isn't the French Riviera. You know, of course, that you can't wear your own suit. Oh, well, Sergeant, you see, I have a medical problem. I'm allergic to army wool and officious young women. Miss Bain, you were rather preoccupied during Captain Murchison's welcoming speech. So you might have missed what she had to say about having the right attitude. I warn you, it's my job to help you get it. Come on, let's race! I forgot. I don't know how to swim. Oh, darling. Help. What a silly thing to forget. I Hello, don't... Blondie. Ah! On your way, Sergeant. Huh? Oh, hi. I, uh... I don't know what to call you. I uh, can't find your insignia. And what should I call you before I call the MPs? The MP? Oh, we're buddy, buddy. <laughs> no, I'll go quietly. All I ask is six of your girls for test subjects. And say that we, we start with you. Now, there are a lot of things that I'd like to ask you, Blondie. First, what is your full name? Oh, I had a good life to see You're in great voice, but what about the girls? Oh, thank you, sir. I tried to pick you six different types. I got their home states, their weights, their ages. <laughs> Couldn't get their measurements. You're slipping. Oh. Private Schneiderman, New York State. Uh, Private North, London. Oh, uh, Gustafson from Wisconsin Rapids. Oh, Tanaku, Honolulu. Oh, you stuck, honey? Move it, Fogarty. Please, Blondie, I just want to talk to you. Oh, I've got great plans for you. Oh, let me tell you about it. Now, please, honey. Company B, base training battalion, Corporal Swetko speaking. Hold on, sir. Telephone with Bane. Thank you. It's a treasure hunt. Now, what did you forget? Well, I just came over for six girls. I need them. Well, you always did overdo. Father McBain, telephone. The VIP, Colonel Fairchild. Sky! Better take your shovel. Sky, darling. Where are you, Paris? Washington Airport. And exactly 29 minutes by helicopter away from my hope, your still loving arms. I told you we'd be commuting. Oh, Angel, I can't wait to hear. Well, yes, yes, perfect timing. We get our first six-hour pass this weekend. Oh, you naughty Parisian. <laughs> I'll be counting the seconds. Yes. Can we load our six girls, sir? Captain Murchison's given the go signal. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yes, we can have dinner. Well, there's a wonderful little tavern in Williamsburg. Yes, yes, I've got my car. I'm afraid I'll need one more, Captain. A tall, dark, sort of skinny, cold-blooded type. There are very important psychological aspects to this test. Well, uh, Private McBain has her first pass coming today, sir. But if you request her, then the needs of the service come first. Consider her requested. promise to bring him back. We're living, girls. We're living. You keep prepping. Next time, I might take you. Please give this to Colonel Fairchild when he asks for me. Joe McBain. Tell him I'm on special duty at the corner now to casting land. Are they all in there? All present and accounted for, sir. Uh, set it for uh, Big Delta. Big Delta? Yes, yeah. sir. And make it 20 below zero. 20 below zero. Right, sir. Thank you. 
Girls, you're now near Anchorage, Alaska, and the temperature is 20 degrees below zero. Can you hear me? If you can, wave your arms. Fine. Now, you've just climbed out of a cargo plane that's crash-landed, and in order to survive, you're going to have to pitch a tent, make a fire, and cook a meal before nightfall or freeze to death. Now, number one, you light the fire. Number two, unpack the weapons to discourage any wolves in the neighborhood. Three, four, and five, put up the tent. Number six, fill the emergency lantern with fuel. And number seven, unpack the flares. Hold it. Begin. <laughs> That fire lit one. Turn on the wind. Yes, sir. Number one, light that fire. Two, four, five, and six. Your face is still warm? A three, four, five, six, and seven. Come on out. Lieutenant Constable wants to buy you some coffee. Hot coffee. Come on, girls. Number one, light the fire. And now the sleeping bag test for wind and snow. Pardon me, uh, am I interrupting something? Oh, hello there. Colonel Fairchild, I believe. How do you do? I guess I must be in the wrong place. Oh, no, no. Oh, I, uh... Oh, looking for, for uh, Mrs... Uh, for, for Joe. She's inside. Come on, bring out the whole bag. Hey, 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 Joe. Joe, is that you? I think so, darling. Oh, Sky, I'm so glad you're here. So am I, darling. Uh, I thought we had a... What are you doing in here? Trying to light a fire. Why? I'm supposed to cook dinner. Oh, but darling, now look, we got a date. I don't want to eat here. Oh, no, it was just a test, sweetheart. Oh, I nearly forgot. Picked oh. up a little something for you on the Rue de la Paix. Oh, darling, that's so sweet, See, that zipper's just no good at 40 below. Neither I. Well, now that you've done your bit for the glorious future of the Alaskan sleeping bag, shall we get out of here? Oh. Uh, now we'll test the overwhites, the camouflage covers. Well, what? Lift your feet. Sergeant, hit the blizzard. I hope it's sweet enough for all you sweet things. It just couldn't be sweet enough for you. Oh, thank you. How do you find the Army? Keen? You know, I can help you with your studies, teach you things. Hey, that's wonderful. I want to learn things, especially a phonetic alphabet. Uh, you know, that's very hard. Oh, it's a cinch. It's A, able. A, able, B. No, that's enough for one lesson. I don't want you to get brain fag. <laughs> do I grow on you? No, sir. <laughs> you, me, and
and, and Tom here, how do I offend? Oh, it isn't you. It's just that you're like all the others. The others? You mean there has been some other man before me? Interested as deeply and as... And as physically. Nobody cares about my mind. Your mind? Well, I'm crazy about it now that you mention it. I'll bet. No, no kidding. What night can we get a discussion group together? Say, just you and me and Tom and Charlie here? Never. <laughs> Never? Then this is goodbye. That's right, goodbye. You go your way, Danger O'Dowd, <clears throat> and I'll go mine. Hey, where'd you get that? You put it down, Sergeant, please. I'll just die. <laughs> About our discussion group. It's a deal? <laughs> That's blackmail. Oh, oh. I like that one. Well, it's a deal. It's a deal. Oh, let's see. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. A few calendars. I was very poor at the time. But when it was no. Check that liner. No penetration here. Looks like we made it, sir. Splendid. How'd you come through, Lieutenant? With flying colors. You made a substantial contribution to anthropometry. That's just ginger peachy. Oh, and I, uh, I want to thank you. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And may I go now, Professor? And one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Get as close as you can, will you? I'm responsible for her welfare. I had a long talk with Colonel Fulbright this morning. Oh. She was very sympathetic. You see, you've been in the service about ooh, five weeks now. It's too late to be commissioned from the outside. But if your commanding officer okays you after observing you're doing basic, you can apply for one in three weeks. Three weeks? Observe me. Now, oh, good heavens, Sky, if I haven't already demonstrated in public life... Darling, Paris. That, I, ...that I'm fit for leadership. Honey, think about our little Garrett. And that I'd make a good officer. Walking hand in hand along the Seine. Oh, all right. I'll be good if it kills me. And it probably will. <laughs> <laughs> Join your group quick before the sergeant sees you. Uh -oh. Sergeant, I'm afraid some of this is my doing. I think uh, this I... is uh, Colonel Fairchild. He flew all the way from Paris just to witness our experiments. Well, to be honest, uh, we're old friends, and we plan to spend the evening together. But couldn't you make an exception? He's come such a distance. Sorry, sir, but we're not allowed to issue passes this late to any trainee. How did you get such a make out? We gave her all the slides. no place like Nome. Huh. McBain, she won the endurance record. She stayed in longer than all of us. Well, well done, McBain. Girls were scheduled to go out on the rifle range at 1500 on Monday. As you know, the actual firing is voluntary. Okay, Sergeant, you can put me down. Oh, me, me too. too. Yeah, me too. Oh, fine. Fine, all of you. Excluding McBain? Including McBain. Okay. You have one minute to light up. Hurry up. Hey, come on, Joe, come on. Good girl. Now, if you can stay just as sweet as you can be for the next three weeks. Mm, then I must have action. Oh, honey, you're gonna get it. Start time, McBain. Your organ's got a very chic McBain, but, but not, not regulation. <laughs> Uh, Colonel, I didn't intend to take up your whole day, but I'm sure you got a great deal out of it. Oh, I did, I did. You see, I'm very scientific-minded myself. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yes, yes. 
MIT four years. So, major in metallurgy. Well, that's very interesting. Still carry on a few experiments myself. Well, well. I take this ignition key, for instance. You wouldn't think that such a tough alloy as this, when submitted to a low temperature, would uh, prove brittle, would you? Yet it does. Let me show you. All in the interest of science, McBain. And yet there's so many things that are unexplained. <laughs> Good night, experts. <laughs> well, it's only about uh, four miles down here at the Quartermaster Corps, country boy. You want I should uh, hut ye? Taxi style? <laughs> Take chomp! Here it pays! Ye fold help! Here it keep people! Ye leave right leave! Ready on the left! Ready on the right! Ready on the firing line! Commence! Firing! See <laughs> firing! McBain. Well, keep that weapon pointed towards well, the target. Nothing, it's just that I, I had no idea there'd be so much noise. You want to quit? Oh, oh when I'm having so much fun. Ready on the left. Ready on this the left. This I had to see to believe. She really went hands through hands with it. Then, fire. Joe! I hit a bullseye! Great, Grace. Hey, I'm going to have to frisk her before I take her out again. It's nice work if you can get it. <laughs> Hey! 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 Get that weapon pointed towards the target. Oh. To the lab, Jane. Yeah. I may need my armored fist. All right, once more, just to remind you, it's gas, not Chanel number five. <laughs> Seven weeks, and she's still on her feet. Hey, Blondie! Don't sit in any poison ivy! Ooh, are you and Colonel Fairchild going dancing in this? We sure are. What are you going to do in that? Wash my hair. Uh, Clara, put my pass in my bag, please. All right, but you get in on time tonight. You've been a good girl for six whole days. You'd just be good for another two weeks, and then when we graduate, maybe you and the Colonel, we could all be assigned to Paris together. Then I could do my underground work there. Except I can't speak French. Oh, well, you wouldn't have to say much. Why don't we uh, make it a foursome and bring you a singing sergeant, huh? Uh, I don't trust him. No? You know, in our last discussion group together, nobody turned up but him. Uh, voila. I dread to ask, but what did you talk about? Well, part of the time, you and that ex-husband of yours oh. told the sergeant you had another date with the colonel tonight. You didn't. I... Uh, you did? Do you suppose they're looking for us? Well, they can't pull that good of the service stuff on me. Isn't this fun? Oh, just great. You and that yak, yak, yak and yours. What are you going to start buying for our side? Over you go. How long is this scientific marathon going to last? Until we determine the density of the cement and ensure a perfect lamination of the layers of cloth. But you want to talk to her. Oh, Colonel, I think this is just your size. Now, let me have the flour. I'll keep it fresh for you. Here goes another. Oh, it looks like the bloodhouse of Coney Island. Oh, hey, what's this? The last couple miles. It's dark in here. <laughs> hey, Joe. Joe, what's up? You're such look a Look at cat. me. No, don't look at me. What are you doing in there? I'm trying to get out. I thought you had a day. Oh, it's fine, Sergeant. 
I'll line them up, huh? Yes, sir. All right, girls, line right up along here, please. All right, undo your jacket. Right. Okay, Sergeant, they're all yours now. We'll locate and record the damp areas. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, no, no, you, here's where we separate the men from the boys you fellas work on down there. Let's see what's under the hood. <laughs> you tickled. Excuse me. <laughs> Unzip, please. Raise your arms. Mm, very good. Very good. Let's see the back. Not so bad. You used to think it was perfect. Damp there. All the way through? To the core. Yeah. Better than I expected. All in the line of duty. Isn't that enough? More than enough. You ought to watch that army food. You've been very patient, Colonel. Thank you, one. Well, it's 1,500. You've still got time to leave the base. Back into the coats, girls. Next, we test the gloves. You've already done enough to keep your hands off of her. I can't issue a pass after 1800. I'm sorry. Oh, you're always sorry. And you'll be sorry, too, with that smug, contemptible, misplaced sense of humor of yours. Take it to the car. Oh, no, you don't. I demand to see someone in charge right here and now. But, Madam McBain, are you sick? Of everything. I'm up to here with your meaningless rules and regulations. You've got to do this before 0800, and you can't do that after 0900. Well, you suppose we talk about it tomorrow? Yes, I think that would be better. Well, you want to know what I think? I think I made the mistake of my life when I lifted my right hand. I've marched myself till my feet are two sizes larger. I ground 806 hamburgers and gassed myself to eternity and back, only to be singled out for unfair treatment. You wanted to make something of me. Well, you have a nervous wreck. All right, let's go, McBain. I don't want to be a captain, or a major, or a colonel, or a general with two stars. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Be seated, Captain. As Private Josephine is saying, commanding officer, you've requested this board to consider her separation from the service. Will you please give us the facts? Well, unfortunately, Private McBain's outbursts are characteristic. And there's a slim chance of her ever being able to accept discipline. For a while, she did seem to be making an effort. I feel she should be allowed to graduate. Women like McBain can do us great harm. We, the undersigned of Company B, first floor, respectfully request that Private McBain be allowed to graduate with us. You formed a close personal friendship with Private McBain. So, isn't your testimony a little biased? Oh, yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Oh, ma'am, I know she's sorry for what she said. She always mops under her bed. And a woman like...
like that doing her own washing. That uh, makes you stop and think, doesn't it? Uh, yes. Thank you, Private Schneiderman. Excuse me. Well, and then we got divorced, although her father, the senator, was on my side. And that night, when I came back, on the staircase, he heard us quarreling, and the next thing you know, he tricked her into joining the army, hoping that you'd straighten her out. And that's just what you were doing when I came along with my misguided sense of humor and started the needler. Uh, left anything out? Just the Japanese beetles. And uh, Mr. McDane, this is not a court of domestic relations. And unless you have some pertinent testimony... Just this. I've witnessed enough of her training and seen her make a sincere effort to know that I saw the girl I used to know on that island. Therefore, in conclusion, in my opinion, she'll be a good soldier. Thank you, Mr. McBain. We appreciate your coming. Private McBain, have you anything to say in your own behalf? The effort that Andrew, uh, Mr. McBain, referred to was an effort, but it wasn't sincere. It was only a selfish means of joining someone in Paris. I never seriously considered an army career. I'm not officer material. I'm not even private material. And contrary to Mr. McBain's opinion, I wouldn't make a good soldier. I'm out. Joe! You private Joe McBain? Colonel Fairchild's on the phone for you. Oh, thank you. Maybe your Colonel Fred, he'll think of something. Well, did he think of something? He sure did. We're going to be married day after tomorrow. Oh, Joe. Well, oh, that's wonderful. What am I going to do without you? Oh, now, Clara. With a parade to guide on. Come on, we got to win it. No, no, no. You've got to win it. I've got to pack. If the way is rough and the odds are tough and the need is for all out power and if every day brings a challenge our way I'm mighty proud of you. That doesn't belong to you personally. It goes into the day room. Oh, I know, Sergeant, but can't we take it to the party, please? Oh, I think it'll be all right. I'll ask Captain Murchison. Gee, you've got to go, Joe. No, thanks, Clara. I'd rather not. Oh, don't be like that. It's also my engagement party. Noisy. The scene, Sergeant. Well, when did that happen? Oh, well, he doesn't know about it yet. He, he, he doesn't know about it yet? He, he doesn't know about it yet. I didn't think she'd come. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Clara persuaded her, after all, it is their last night together. And ours. <laughs> oh, we got to live and love. What's the matter? Well, this thing's alive. Well, let's kill it. I've just got to say goodbye to Clara. <laughs> Oh, hello. 
matter of fact, very good. The WAC must have excellent cooking teachers. Oh, they do. But I learned this technique from a civilian expert. Uh, they're not too small. No, no, just right. Exactly. You got the knack finally, huh? You mix the onions. Before I added the salt and pepper. Good girl. This is our last dance together. Doesn't it make you feel all choked up inside? Sure. So, this is the first time we've ever danced together. Say, my assistants seem to have their hands full, so I guess I'll have to take you one. Taking more notes this time. No, I'll rely on my memory this oh, time. But look, my heart's still over. I'll be Don't saving worry over. about I it. I can't. Come I'll on. carry on. You two carry on. We're rubbing elbows with some very important elbows, you know, tonight. Oh, yes, yes. Everybody that is anybody is here. There's Gussie Kostopson of the Wisconsin Cheese Set. Oh, yeah. Her father just switched to electric milkers, you know. No, no, yeah. I didn't know. You mean that you've really been assigned to intelligence? Yes. As a driver. Oh, don't be discouraged, honey. Why, you'll be driving so many intelligent people that you're bound to pick up lots of pointers. Oh, Sergeant, you're so encouraging. I don't know what I'll ever do without you. Teaching me the phonetic alphabet and all. Oh, I I've uh, memorized up to H. How? And I, I don't. What's next? J, J, L, love. Oh, Sergeant, you say that with such feeling. Uh, well, good luck and goodbye. I'm afraid I must be going. Going? Going where? Where, where are you assigned to? Oh, it's uh, too top secret to tell. Besides, we'll be worlds apart. Oh, Clara Schneiderman. Yes? Would you? Yes. Could you? Yes. Two could be as cheap as one. <laughs> And his maiden aunt... What did she do? She did. She had wore a wig and he never knew it. <laughs> well, now, uh, about that notorious McBain woman. What about her? Uh, well, uh, she'd like to thank you for what you did this afternoon. Well, Mr. McBain is very sorry he put his big foot into everything. Oh. Joe, I, I didn't want him to shoot you at sunrise without knowing the truth. That might have been simpler if they did. You know, that's one of the most becoming things you've ever worn. Well, they're taking it back in the morning. I wonder what I'm doing here anyway. I was told this was also Clara's engagement party. Well, let's ask Clara. She might know. Hey, anybody engaged? Yes, we are. Oh, Clara, what does the sergeant have to say about it? Oh, well, everything went black. <laughs> oh, say, now that we no longer have any secrets from each other, where are you assigned to? Fort Lee, Virginia. I've been had. <laughs> That'll teach you to never wave it away. Oh, will you break the news, son, rather than give it to the society columns? Oh, all right, sure. Uh, quiet. Uh, will you stop the music? Uh, give me one of those. Uh... I, uh, I don't know much about that dame, the goddess Athena, who founded your order. But it is written that she was very adept in both the arts of war and peace. So it follows that a whack should make a good wife. A wife who can even handle a sergeant in the quartermaster corps. <laughs> so let us lift our cups to the forthcoming union. And incidentally, it's unions like this that keep our union in business. Why, I give you Clara Schneiderman and Norbert... Norbert? I said Norbert Jackson. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I'm not going to take it. Right. He chased you till you finally called him. <laughs> hey, come on. I, I need help. Oh, hey, don't I get kissed? Oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. What can I do? You ask me, Fort Lee's most celebrated hostess, put the glasses on the tray. This is a wine called champagne. People drink it at weddings, christenings, and such occasions as this. Save the last two for us. 
I think Here, Bosch, you everybody... toast us with mine. All right, I'll do that to the best of happiness and everything. Come on, sir. Circus is over. And I fell right off that trapeze, flat on my face. Poor Sky. He'll have to pick up the pieces. He will. In spite of cold and rain and treadmills and other obstacles, we're uh, still friends. Still friends. Incidentally, are you usually that thorough about examining the damp areas? All depends. Oh. Wasn't fair to the Colonel, I'm sorry. None of it was. That's for sure. I shouldn't have hiked you all the way to Point Barra. My sadistic streak, but I guess I don't have to tell you about that. All my cold feet. Well, I wanted to see you at your worst. Well, you succeeded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no man's land. End of the line. Well, Mr. McBain, it was a right nice party. And not a politician in the house. As a matter of fact, I can't remember when I enjoyed one more. Neither can I. Now, about that Korea business. Yes? Don't you have too much confidence in that bulletproof camisole you're always trying to perfect? Well, it sounds braver than it is. I, I'm really going over just to investigate the Japanese beetle situation. If you're referring to our old elm tree, I'm afraid it's past saving. I don't know. Science does wonderful things these days. Happy journey. Happy research, and I hope I didn't leave too many scars. Vice versa. Good luck to the Colonel. And the Colonel's lady. Well, you're, you're all over lipstick. Yeah. Yeah, hold this one. It's the wrong shade. Should be darker. I was real messy about it. service now for about 17 months, and I figured out, honey, don't you want to hear about it? Oh, yes, yes, of course, Sky. You know Pritchard, Blaymore, and Fitz. Oh, are they on general staff? Oh, dear, no jokes, please. And will you forget about the Army? Well, anyway, they're the second biggest agency in the country. Oh. I can make them the biggest. Penetrated him to the tune of 55 grand per annum. Oh, Sky, that is wonderful. Uh, that's E Company coming back from field training. It means New York, London, Paris in the spring. But my home base will be Washington, D.C. We can open a house and live there. I've alerted your secretary, who's got the dust sheets off the furniture, and I've already got a cinch to get his baby food contract. So you see, darling, the hand that holds a cocktail glass can be mightier than a sword. Guy, wait. Here comes a batch of new recruits. Who do you 
gonna be? Anything they'll let me be. Maybe I can get a free ride to Korea. 